All right, how's everybody doing? I'm Jeremy Langwa. I'm here at Homeless House Estate and Gardens. And thank you so much for tuning in to our cooking video. We love doing these videos and we have a great recipe today. Like always, y'all, if you like what we're doing here, please hit that share button. It's right there. Just click, give it a little click. Helps get this video out. And also at any time, if you have any questions as we start cooking, we love interacting with y'all either answering live if you're here live and also uh, or answering them later i'm looking at the comments throughout the week and i love answering questions as well also we're so glad you are here live we do these every thursday at 12 o'clock but also do you know that if you go to uh youtube and you type in homeless house and go to the homeless house channel on youtube youtube all the videos we've ever done are located there as well so it's a great resource if you want to see some of our past videos Oh, Jesse, some of our past videos we did look terrible, so just be aware of that. We've gotten a little bit better, but, uh, but they are up there on YouTube as well. So great thing to check out. All right, well, let's go ahead and just get started. So we're coming to the end of crawfish season, and I had to get one more recipe in because I just love crawfish. And one thing that I really love doing just as a chef, you know, certain chefs kind of gravitate to different areas of cooking, whether it's baking, whether it's desserts, whether it's smoking and grilling. Well, for whatever reason, one thing that I feel I really kind of excel at or that I really have just taken to as far as cooking is soups and sauces. So if I was working for a scoffier at a classic French brigade system, I'd probably be a saucier. But I just love making them. I love making soups. And um, so we're going to do a cauliflower and crawfish soup. I just love cauliflower. I love the flavor it has, and it's gonna make a great soup. We're actually gonna use the cauliflower and puree it, and it's gonna be the thickener for this creamy soup. So let's go ahead and just get started, and we'll kind of talk about it as we go. Of course, we're starting off with a great pot. I'm using one of my favorite pieces of cooking equipment in the world, and that is cast iron. I love cast iron. I think every cooking, uh, if you were to buy a stainless steel pot with a copper bottom and a stainless steel top on the bot on the top of it, I think every other cooking, to, cooking uh, pot is trying to emulate what stainless steel naturally does, which is it's great for cooking soups and sauces because it has a thick bottom, so you don't have to worry about scorching. And because of the thickness of the cast iron, it distributes and holds heat evenly. And that's what we love about that. But of course, use whatever you have at home. I got the, the pot heated up. I'm adding a little bit of oil. And since we're making a cauliflower soup, what I'm actually going to do first is I've just taken a head of cauliflower or look, if you're at the store and you want to buy just cauliflower florets, that's fine. But you take a head of cauliflower, cut the bottom off and peel the florets off. And we can use everything chunky. And also, whenever we prep these items, you don't have to worry about these cutting these too pretty. At the first, just kind of get it all rough chopped up because we're going to blend the whole thing anyway. No one's going to actually see these. So I'm going to go in with the cauliflower into a hot pan. Starting to get, and what we're looking to do here is, what this is going to do is, this is going to start getting a little bit of color. We're actually looking to get, this soup's going to actually not look white when you think cauliflower. It's going to have a little bit of color to it because we're going to caramelize this and that's going to create a little bit of flavor. So we got our cauliflower going. I got, let me show you what I'm working with here. I took a potato, I diced that up, I got some diced onions, and I got some garlic. These are our vegetables we're going to be adding to it, but I want to kind of talk about each one individually. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get the onions in there, let those just start to brown up with that cauliflower, and I'm now going to add potato. The reason I'm adding potato into this dish as well is because we're going to puree this and the potato is going to add some body and starchness to this soup and give it a velvety smooth quality when we puree this. If we just use straight up cauliflower, think about it, we make mashed potatoes, you boil the potatoes and you mash them and they're, they're nice and smooth. Well, if you did the same thing with cauliflower, sometimes it doesn't puree as smooth because you don't have that natural starch that a potato has. And by adding the potato in with the cauliflower, kind of half and half, it helps give the soup some structure. And we're just going to kind of get this going and we're looking to get some color. I got my pan pumped up all the way. And what you want to do is really start to cook this and really start, you'll start to get little brown bits on your cauliflower, like right here. I got a little piece right there. It's starting to get a little color on it. And that is exactly what we're looking for. Cook it over high heat, not stirring it too much, but every now and then just to make sure nothing's sticking, we do give it a stir every now and then. I'm not constantly stirring like I'm making a roux. Uh, I'm just stirring every now and then because I want it to sit for a second and really kind of toast on that hot pan. 
Now you'll notice I haven't added the garlic in yet. This is my minced garlic, which I have. I want to wait a, wait a little bit and really get, let this get a jump start. I want to let this get a little bit color because I mentioned this several times before in some of our past cooking demonstrations, but if you put garlic in, minced garlic and hot oil can burn really quickly. I'm talking about in seconds. It can go from being raw to cooked to burnt in a matter of seconds in a really hot pan. And if your garlic burns, it's going to turn everything else bitter. So we like to wait just a moment. Let this get a little jump start. Then we're going to come in with that garlic after we've gotten a little bit of color on this. Now, normally I would want to let this go a little bit longer, maybe get a little bit more color, but I'm just looking to slowly get a little bit of browning on that cauliflower in, in, in the pan. You can see some of this cauliflower here, like for example, let me pull this up, kind of hold it up. We're starting to get a little bit of brown on here and we want to get, let this get a little bit, just a slightly bit more brown all over. But we're gonna go ahead now, let's get that garlic in there. We've let everything kind of get a jump start, and we're gonna saute that garlic just for a second. All right, moving it around. Man, once you add that garlic, the smell just really comes through. We smell a vision with a thing. But now that we've had all this going, now we want to start to add our liquids into the dip. I got three. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing that I'm going to add is chicken stock. Now, if you look at the recipe, the recipe calls for three cups. But basically, I'm just adding enough stock to where, and leaving it cranked up all the way, I'm adding enough stock to where it'll just almost cover all the ingredients in here, all those vegetables we have in there. And then we're going to let that just crank, still leaving it cranked up, we're going to let that come to a boil. Once it starts to bubble, I'm going to turn my uh, heat down to just a little bit of a simmer and let that kind of simmer away. Chicken stock's in. We're going to add some, oh, well, before I leave that, I guess I should, if, you, if you're at home asking the question, Jeremy, you're making a crawfish soup, why are you using chicken stock? Well, a couple reasons. A, chicken stock, it's just readily available. And again, I encourage all my friends out there in cooking, you know, definitely go to your, when in the soup section of your markets and grocery stores, oftentimes they sell that boxed chicken broth. That's if you, if you don't, not us at the restaurant, we're sometimes making our own chicken stock, but just if you're a home cook, you just go ahead and buy one of those boxes of chicken broth and it's just a fantastic neutral stock. If you don't want to use chicken stock, um, you can use vegetable stock. If you do have access to crawfish shells and you boil them and you were to make your crawfish soup with a crawfish uh, stock, that is fantastic. Do that, that's gonna be great as well. And also, like all recipes we do, this is adaptable. We're using crawfish today, but you can use shrimp, you can use crab, all that, oysters, any of that would be fantastic in this dish. But that's our chicken stock. I'm adding a little bit. This is some cooking sherry, not much. It's a little splash of cooking sherry. You know, sherry is one of those kind of fortified wines that goes great with cream sauces. And since we're making this creamy soup, it's going to add just this little bit great flavor uh, to the soup as well. And then the next liquid we're going to add is some good old lemon juice. I say this all the time, seafood and lemon, you can't go wrong. So if you're making something with seafood, adding a little bit of lemon juice into your dishes, it's always going to enhance it. They just go together perfectly. So boom, we got a little bit of lemon juice in there. And now we're at a point where we just want this to cook. We want this to stay on, like I said, bring it up to a simmer then crank your heat down to a, I mean, bring it up to boil, crank your heat down to a simmer, and then let that go for about 20 minutes. You can put a lid on it, that's fine, or leave it, the lid off. What I do want you to watch is it's possible if you're boiling it hard that you can get a little reduction of your sauce, your stock, so, it'll, so if that happens, you always got a little bit of reserve stock here, just come back, and if it looks like some of your liquid's cooking away, just add a little bit back more into it, no problem. I'm actually gonna move this to the side because this does, there's no getting around it. You need to cook it for about 20 minutes. Not too long, but let that go for about 20 minutes. And that's what I got right over here. I'm gonna bring that over. And let's get this on this, the stove. And once it's cooked for about 25, 20 to 25 minutes, everything's just gonna get nice and tender in this pot. And that's exactly what we're looking for. You can see that 
with, from browning just all the the potatoes and the cauliflower and those vegetables it did give it a little a bit of a brown color and that's exactly what we're looking for because that means we developed some great flavors but if you were to just touch this you know it's ready to go when you can just kind of take the back of your spoon and you push on it and it's just tender tender that means it's everything softened and we're ready to puree it so let's go ahead and do that so i got a good old immersion blender that we're going to use and this is like this is a godsend for this dish. This is the tool that's going to make this dish easy. However, of course, if you don't have one of these at home, first of all, I would encourage you, you can find these for 20 bucks at, 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 a, at a store. And it's a great tool to have in your kitchen arsenal because it's, it's very versatile into oftentimes pureeing these soups and stuff like that. But look, if you, I get it. If you don't have one of these at home, what you would then need to do is just take the contents of this, ladle it into a blender. Be careful. Anytime you put hot liquid into a blender, really make sure that top's on. I would never let Jessie do this uh, well, in my kitchen. She can do whatever she wants in her kitchen. But if you, hot liquids can, can blast off and we don't want that. So let's go ahead. We're gonna get that immersion blender here. And I'm just gonna start pureeing this soup. And what I'm looking to do is I'm kind of just moving this and I'm just trying to just liquefy or, or puree anything that's kind of soft. Now, I'm gonna puree this pretty smooth. However, there's no rules to the soup. If you happen to want to leave a couple of chunks in the soup, that is absolutely fine. But one thing that's going to happen, and you'll notice, is when we get to this point and we start pureeing all this, by pureeing that potato and that cauliflower, it's actually going to start to thicken the soup. Let's just get this all kind of pureed up. And like I said, puree this as much or as little as possible, but it's starting to look a little thick here. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe I will leave a couple of solid chunks in there. And that is perfect. You just wash this off and boom, you're done. Good to go. Now you notice one thing that we're now going to do is leaving this on the stove, coming up to a boil. Of course, the soup can be made ahead of time, but just to finish it off, this is the base. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to add about a cup of cream. That's going to do a couple things. It's really going to give it a nice white color, uh, get some of that white color back into the soup. And just the cream itself is going to give this soup a richness and a velvetiness to the soup. That's really great. So just a little bit of cream right there. We're going to start to season this now. A couple dashes of hot sauce, as spicy as you want it. You can add that in there. If you don't like any spice, well, don't put the hot sauce in. But we are making a good crawfish Louisiana soup, so we got to have a little bit of spice, y'all. So we're going to add some salt, some pepper, and again, so simple. You just throw everything in a pot, brown it up a little bit, boil it away till it gets tender, puree it, and then you got this incredible base for the soup. And what I love about it, when you taste it, the flavor, because the thickener is actually the ingredient, the cauliflower you use to puree it, um, it, it really, the, the flavors really come through. And then. If I was making this ahead of time, I always like to add my seafood in at the end because you don't want to overcook your seafood. So for example, we're using our beautiful Louisiana crawfish, which we, I just open it right out of the bag. Some people will drain this contents. I think even Jessie told me she likes to drain it because she thinks it smells fishy. But to me, it's all flavor to me. So I like to capture it. I never like to rinse my crawfish off because there is a little bit of fat in here. And I think you get, again, you get flavor from that, but personal preference for sure. I'm going to go ahead and get this crawfish in the soup. And you, again, add this crawfish right at the end. The crawfish is already cooked. These are pre-cooked crawfish. So you don't have to cook it. That hot soup is going to warm up those crawfish tails. So they only need to be in here for like a minute. And you have a great soup. So this is done. We're going to go ahead and just scoop it out. But just a couple of things. If you would have pureed this and you thought the soup was like, this is perfect. But let's say the soup was too thick. Well, that just means you just need to add another couple splashes of stock back into this and you don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of those nice chunks of crawfish. Come right over to our bowl. We've got some of those great potatoes and cauliflower here as well. And there you have it, guys. This is a cauli creamy cauliflower and crawfish soup. Super versatile. You can go any way with it. Add oysters, add shrimp if you don't have crawfish. But give the soup a try with this cauliflower. It's a really great flavor. We'll be serving this at our Carriage House restaurant 
all this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Come on by if you're in the area and give it a try. Also, we're actually starting a new menu this afternoon at the Carriage House. So if you haven't been here in a while, come check it out. We would love to see what you think of some of the things we have going on here at the Homeless House. Other than that, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. <laughs> All right, that should come out pretty good for a, uh, you know, like soup or something. Not when I'm making soup, soup in the kitchen, I'm adding a little season taste in. You know, I'm not just going flying blind. <laughs>